1983, a new sitcom burst onto the TV screens of Great Britain. The first series of The Blackadder wasn't a huge success, but its later series were, and has since become a classic, equaling the likes of Forty Towers and Monty Python. In the early 2000s, it was voted Britain's second favourite sitcom, and it followed the lineage of the Blackadder family for 500 years, all the way from the 15th to the 20th century. Throughout the series, we see an Edmund Blackadder run away from a fateful battle, be on the wrong side of a civil war, have mad Scottish cousins who are always fighting each other, as well as the English. He ends up fighting a duel to the death, and eventually he's in the trenches of World War I, still managing to get out of the fighting. At the end of every series, they killed off the cast in some gruesome fashion, but it was the end of the fourth series that everyone remembers. Captain Blackadder's cunning plans finally run out, and he's forced to lead his men over the top into no man's land. Just after they climb the parapet, they disappear into the explosions and machine gun fire like so many other men who went to fight in the Great War and have no known grave. The scene fades and all that's left is a field of poppies. Suddenly, a series that had produced so many laughs for six years moved the nation to tears, and ever since 1989 there's been a call for another series. However, few people know that Blackadder is a real Scottish family. There really was an Edmund Blackadder who really was on the wrong side of a civil war, and ran away from a fateful battle. The Blackadders really did exist throughout the ages, and there was even a captain and a general Blackadder in the Great War. The Blackadders are still with us and still making history, but the Blackadder we're concerned with actually served with distinction in World War II. This Blackadder joined the Royal Auxiliary Air Force in 1936 as an inexperienced and eager young man. When war broke out, he saw constant action throughout the Battle of France and the Battle of Britain. By the end of 1940, he was a seasoned and decorated combat pilot. The story of the real Blackadder and the often forgotten Battle of France is one that's worth telling. The Blackadder clan get their name from the land of Blackadder in Berwickshire, which in turn gets its name from a river called Blackadder Water. This later joins Whiteadder Water and together they form a tributary of the River Tweed. The fictional Blackadder joins the clergy in the 15th century, and as it happens there really was a Blackadder in the clergy in this period. In 1492, a Robert Blackadder was made the first Archbishop of Glasgow. In 1495 he narrowly missed out on being made a Cardinal, and died in 1508 while on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. The land of Blackadder is near the Scottish border with England, and very near the contested town of Berwick, which changed hands between England and Scotland 13 times in 300 years. The Blackadders were border raiders in the 15th and 16th centuries, and were given more land by James II of Scotland for repelling English raids during this period. After the Blackadders lost 200 clansmen at the Battle of Flodden in 1513, the Hume clan began a hostile takeover around 1518. They took Castle Blackadder and forced the heiresses Beatrix and Margaret to marry into the Hume clan. The eldest of the two was just eight, and they remained prisoners in their own castle until they came of age. In the first series, the fictional Blackadder is nearly killed by two drunken knights while holding the position of Archbishop of Canterbury. Historian William Anderson tells us that a real Robert Blackadder was attacked and killed around 1518 while holding the position of Prior of Coldingham. In a comic relief special, we see Blackadder allied to the losing side in the English Civil War. In reality, the Blackadder clan were allied to Mary Queen of Scots, and therefore on the losing side of the Marian Civil War. In the first series of Blackadder, he's accused of being a witch and almost burnt at the stake. In reality, a William Blackadder was accused of assassinating the husband of Mary Queen of Scots, and was hung, drawn and quartered in 1567. In the very first episode of Blackadder, we see Edmund Blackadder run away from the the Battle of Bosworth Field, a pivotal battle in the Civil War known as the War of the Roses. In reality, an Edmund Blackadder abandoned Mary Queen of Scots at the Battle of Carberry Hill, a pivotal battle in the Civil War known as the Marian Civil War. In the final episode of Blackadder III, we see Blackadder fight a duel to the death against an army officer who started his career in a Scottish regiment. In 1691, a real-life John Blackadder was challenged to a duel by an officer of the Royal Scots. Blackadder won, the officer was killed, and Blackadder was court-martialed. He was later pardoned by the King, and went on to fight in Flanders under William III. He was wounded at the Battle of Blenheim, and again at the Siege of Lille, and after the Battle of Malplaquet he was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. In 1715 he led a regiment that defended Glasgow during the Jacobite Rebellion, 
and later became governor of Stern Stirling Castle. Lieutenant Colonel John Blackadder died a hero in 1729, aged 64. After this, the Blackadder clan disappeared into relative obscurity until the 20th century. There were at least two Blackadders fighting in the trenches of the First World War. One really was a captain, and one really did know Field Marshal Haig. Although the fictional Captain Blackadder was killed going over the top in 1917, there was a real Captain Blackadder who survived the war and was decorated for his service and heroism. Acting Captain Robert Blackadder was awarded the Military Cross for conspicuous gallantry on the 18th of March 1918 during the Spring Offensive. He survived the war and died in 1968, aged 84. Meanwhile, higher up, there was a Major General Charles Blackadder who commanded troops throughout the Great War both in France and Ireland. Having been in the army since 1888, he was finally relieved of command on medical grounds in May of 1918. Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig described his achievements in the Great War as excellent. Major General Charles Blackadder died in 1921 at the age of 51. In one episode of the fourth series, Blackadder took to the skies during the First World War and was shot down over enemy lines. In reality, a Blackadder flew in the skies of World War II, and he's the subject of part two. Thank you.